Did you know that one of the mysteries of dark energy is that not only is the universe expanding, but that expansion is accelerating. This is a reissue of the press release that first went out at the end, in December, the end of last year, 2022. In that press release, we said that the solution to the mystery of dark matter is the, so to speak, long bang. So the fact that the big bang is continuing means that there is ongoing acceleration, which is not visible because there's no background to the universe. And therefore, the perception that there's a need for dark matter is just a misunderstanding because that acceleration by Einstein creates the effects of extra additional gravity. So quite straightforward, quite simple, perhaps even you might say obvious. But hold your horses a second because not everybody's an expert. If we have a galaxy, the Milky Way, which is us, and if we imagine, because that's all we need to do, galaxies surrounding ours that are all moving away, and they may or may not be large or small, spiral or a funny shape. Now, do we think these galaxies are all moving away from us because we're at the centre? Or are we moving as well so that everything's coming apart from everything else and eventually everybody will be marooned in their own island universe? Or is something else going on? Are we stationary, but everybody else is not stationary because they're not special? Not surprisingly, none of those seems very appealing. And so we have, a, we have an uncertainty about dark energy. But it's an uncertainty we can dispel, not using the long bang, although that's, that's an element of this, but not solely using that because the problem we have here is that the answer uh, involves taking a step backwards to undo a mistaken understanding. That it wasn't the case with dark matter, we could, we could take a step forward immediately by the understanding I mentioned earlier. And that's why we would leave with that, of course. What we have in the mystery of dark energy is we have a problem that we cannot solve using physics. We need to solve it using maths. And for that, we need not a physicist, but a computer programmer. Hello. Hello, who are you? I'm a computer programmer. What are you doing in my physics video? I seem to remember you got a D in physics O-level GCSE. That is true, but I've always liked maths and I wrote an essay, Do You Like Numbers? which has been available free of charge from the website. Well, you got a, an A-level in maths, even though it was E, the lowest possible. That is true. Well, actually, I wanted to be an examiner. I got uh, two distinctions in my HNC, in Maths, Stats and Computing, and I trained in, as an adult educator with a city and guilds later on. Um, I failed the interview. I said, I always give 100%. Can we get on with it now? Sorry. Thank you to me. I wrote and self-published these essays. Do you like numbers? It was a response to the question, 
that we begin with, with the talk on the shape of the universe. What is outside the universe? Because this is a question which has been answered incorrectly. So when we say what is outside the universe, how do we imagine that? Are we going up to the edge of everything and seeing that it's all finishes there and it's surrounded by nothing, in which case what does nothing look like? Or does it do we go up to the edge of the universe and it goes on and on and on forever and ever being more and more and making a bit of a nonsense of what is. The question is about infinity and has been answered incorrectly first by Gail Cantor and more recently by Marcus de Soto, Professor of Maths at Oxford University. How does all this relate to computer programming? Well, the problem with Gail Cantor's proof and the description of the proof is well known, very widely known. It is that you arrange all the integers against all the real numbers, 1.1, 1.12, 1.121, so on and so forth. And you discover there are more, more real numbers than there are integers. But that's not a proof. A computer programmer would recognise that that is actually an algorithm. And a computer programmer would also be the first to say an algorithm that runs to infinity, well, we've got a word for that, and the word is a bug. It's so easy to do. Leave the condition off of a do loop, get the condition wrong on a while end loop. The program starts running and it doesn't finish. You have to break into it and you have to fix the bug and it's a very, very common issue to have. So there isn't a problem with multiple infinities. All infinities are the same infinity by Occam's razor. The other issue that is often overlooked to do with infinity is an issue raised by Marcus de Soto's article in The Guardian back in 2009. Here we have the comment about infinity. The smart kids will go for infinity as the largest number imaginable. And this is from a professor at the time. Now, the best way to think about this is to think about pi. Pi is obviously routinely described as being infinite. I think a better word for pi is infinitesimal because if you think about the decimal expansion of pi, it goes on forever and ever and ever, getting longer and longer and longer, but each digit of the expansion is a maximum of nine-tenths of the previous digit. So it goes on and on and on forever and ever, getting smaller and smaller and smaller, but also getting longer and longer and longer. So that's not really... That's, that's, a, that's paradoxical in relation to size. And it's exactly the same with large numbers. How do you add one to a Google 10 to the 100? And there are, there are already numbers that we know of that are larger than the digits that could fit into the universe. It's an interesting aspect, it's an interesting discussion, it's an interesting subject. And it was the subject of my essay, which you can download for free from the website. And that was written 30 years ago. So, these are not world-changing ideas, but they do resolve the issue of what is outside the universe. Because it's a bit like saying, what's the next number after pi? The universe appears to be expanding because you're always right next to the edge, wherever you are. And the proof of it, the demonstration of that, is from the New Scientist website and this article back in 2008. Is matter in the universe arranged in a fractal pattern? A new study of nearly a million galaxies suggests it is, although there are no well accepted theories to explain why. That's not quite true. 
a fractal, in, in, in mathematical terms, a fractal is a set with an infinite perimeter. So switching from maths back to physics now, the universe appears to be expanding because actually we're already right at the edge. That's how the universe works. So the universe has an infinite perimeter. But it doesn't mean it's a, a meaningless um, multiverse where everything that can happen will happen. It's, it's far from being that. It's, it's, it's between those two extremes. There isn't a universe with nothing outside of it, but neither is the universe somewhere where nothing matters and it has no purpose. Quite the reverse. The one thing we do see in the universe in every aspect is that there's always purpose to it. It's true then to say that the universe has an edge that we can we can understand and if it's got an edge it's likely to have a centre and if it's got an edge and a centre then it's got a shape and that's a shape that we could describe in three-dimensional terms. It's also a shape we can describe in non-three-dimensional terms, both usefully. So hence the reason for a talk and the writings which are all available free of charge.